NetFlow has over the years become the de facto standard for bandwidth monitoring and traffic analysis in enterprise networks. Here is a quick video on enabling NetFlow version 5 on your Cisco router. The commands remain the same for almost all iOS devices except the Catalyst switches. To start with, let's log on to the router. Alright, now to the global configuration mode. The first step is enabling NetFlow on the router interfaces. So let's move on to the interface configuration mode. Now, some of the routers support multiple NetFlow commands, that is, IP route cache flow, IP flow ingress, and IP flow egress. Let's take a look at each. IP route cache flow. This command accounts for in traffic across an interface. The command can be applied only on the main interface but that will enable NetFlow on the main interfaces as well as its sub-interfaces. And the next command is IPflow ingress. The newer iOS supports this command. This too accounts for in-traffic across an interface. The difference is this has to be applied on a sub-interface level. So to enable NetFlow using this, apply the command individually on the main interface as well as its sub-interfaces. The third option is IPflow egress. This command, like the ingress, has to be applied at the sub-interface level and has named the egress command captures the out traffic across an interface. A frequently asked question is what is the advantage with egress NetFlow? DSCP-based QoS policies are mostly applied on the outside of an interface. Ingress NetFlow captures traffic before the policy has acted on it, whereas with egress NetFlow, the traffic is captured at the exit and so captures your outbound QoS information. In case you have more questions or I was not clear enough, please drop an email to nfs at manageengine.com and I will be happy to explain. So back to configuration. We were in the interface configuration mode and I am using IPflow egress command to enable NetFlow. Okay, there is a small concept that I should explain at this point. We, and for that matter, all flow tool vendors recommend enabling NetFlow on every interface of the device, whether you monitor them or not. Let me try to explain why. Say we have a router with LAN and a WAN interface and two servers. Server A connected to the LAN and Server B connected over the WAN. So, traffic goes from Server A to B, that is LAN to WAN, and we have IPflow ingress on the LAN interface. Remember, IPflow ingress captures in traffic across an interface, which means in our case, the LAN to WAN traffic is captured and that is accounted as the in traffic for the LAN interface. NetFlow data can also tell us the interface through which traffic exits the router. So, for the flow from server A to B, we know the traffic went in through the LAN interface. The NetFlow data also tells us that the conversation exits the router through the WAN interface, which means the in traffic for the LAN is the out traffic for the WAN. Let us now take the return conversation when server B talks to server A that is WAN to LAN traffic. Ingress NetFlow on the WAN captures in traffic as we already saw. We also know that Ingress NetFlow can tell us the exit interface of the conversation. So for the WAN to LAN flow, the exit interface is a LAN and thus WAN in conversation is accounted as the out traffic for the LAN. The same rule applies even for a device with multiple interfaces. Hope that explains why you need NetFlow on all interfaces of a device to see both in and out traffic. Alright, back to where we were. We enabled NetFlow on the interface using IPflow egress command. At this point when traffic passes through the interface, information such as IP address, port, interface, protocol, etc. is captured and stored in flow cache of the router. How do we export these flow from the cache? There are a set of commands to be applied from the global configuration mode for that. Let's start with NetFlow version. There are multiple versions of Cisco NetFlow. 
of which version 5 and 9 are the most widely used. Version 9 is a newer format and used for flexible NetFlow exports. Let us enable NetFlow version 5 using the command ipflow export version 5. Next is how frequently should the flows be exported from the cache to your analyzer software. That is the function of active and inactive timeout. Active timeout refers to how frequently information about active traffic conversations are exported from the flow cache. The default value is 30 minutes, but we recommend using one minute to get real-time traffic reports and to avoid squeed graphs in reporting tools. With active timeout set to one minute, information about a 10 minute long traffic conversation is exported every 60 seconds, thereby giving you a real-time update on what is happening and the command is ipflow-cache timeout active one. The inactive timeout command defines how frequently information about inactive traffic conversation has to be exported from the cache. Say, when the traffic conversation that lasted 10 minutes end, no more flow information is added to it. It has now become inactive. The router waits for the inactive timeout period and exports the information in NetFlow packets. The default is 15 seconds and we recommend using 15 seconds too. So the command is ipflow-cache timeout inactive 15. But where would all these exported flows go if you do not define a destination IP address? The destination IP address is of course the IP address of the server where NetFlow Analyzer is installed. And the port is one on which the flow analyzer is listening to. Manage Engine NetFlow Analyzer listens on port 9996 UDP and so let us configure that. The command is ipflow-export destination IP address of the server port 9996. Once this is done, NetFlow packets are exported from the cache and your flow analyzer receives the packet. But under what IP address will the flow exporting interfaces be grouped? This is where the source interface command steps in. Interfaces discovered by the flow analyzer will be grouped under the IP address of the source interface and the command is ipflow-export source the interface name. Remember to use an interface which has a route to the destination or interface with the shortest path to the destination. After specifying the source, the individual device interfaces will be identified and grouped under the IP address of the source interface. You can then use SNMP to resolve the IP to the router's host name. That's it and you're done. If you have a tool like Manage Engine NetFlow Analyzer, there is no product configuration required. Manage Engine captures the flow packets reaching the server and generate reports in minutes. Do not forget about permissions. Make sure you have added rules to your access list and firewall to allow NetFlow packets on UDP port 9996. Happy monitoring.